Hi, this is my fourth video in helping people study for actuarial exam 2 on financial math. In this video, we're going to look at problem 1.2.6s in Broberman, finding the final payment on an installment loan. And here's the problem statement. Ed buys a TV from Al for 480, um, but he's not going to pay that 480 right away. He's going to pay 50 right now and then essentially pay back what is a loan over a certain amount of time, 100 every three months for one year, so that's four payments of 100. And then a final payment, an unknown final payment that we're going to solve for in 15 months, which will be three months after the final 100 quarterly payment. We want to find that final payment. What is the amount of the final payment based on Al earning a certain interest rate? It's a three month compound interest rate of 3% compounded every three months. And there's a second question here also, what is the final payment if instead the one month interest rate that Al earns is 1%? All right, so let's set up a number line to help us think this through. It's gonna be best to label time in months here instead of years. So there's this 50 payment at time zero right away. And then there are, are these installment payments every three months, at time three, at time six, at time nine, at time 12, you pay 100, Ed pays 100 at those times. And then Ed pays a final payment 15 months from now that is unknown, let's call that X. We wanna solve for X. The TV is worth 480. So the basic problem solving idea here about how to solve for X is that we wanna equate uh, either the future values of all these quantities, say at time 15, or the present value of all these quantities at time zero. You can do it either way. Uh, since you already have 480 at time zero, it's probably best to do the present values. That'd be a, a little bit quicker. Um, so we need to essentially equate 480 with the present values of these one, two, three, four, five, six payments based on a three month interest rate of 3%. That's a 3% three month rate. If we're gonna be able to calculate present values, we're gonna to want to calculate that uh, discount factor that we called V in the last video, which is one over one plus I, one over 1.03. Let's go ahead and approximate that right now. I can just type 1.03, take the reciprocal, or I could do one divided by 1.03, and I get 0 0.9708. Let's go ahead and carry all the decimals here that we see, 73786. Uh, if I use the memory feature in the calculator, I probably wouldn't need to write that down, but let's just go ahead and write it down for safekeeping here. All right, um, the 50 is at time zero, so I can I don't have to discount that back in time. But these 100 payments do need to be discounted back in time. I need to effectively pull them back to the present by multiplying by powers of V. The first one would be multiplied by V because again, V is, since I is a three month rate, V would also be a three month thing. It would be a three month discount factor or present value factor. Actually, it's probably better to call it a present value factor. Um, for the 100 payment at time six months, I need to multiply by V squared. Pull it back in time two periods for V. For the nine month one, V cubed. For the 12 month one, V to the fourth. I can factor out the 100 out of those and write it like this. Again, since V is already in terms of a three month rate, this does not, this should not be v cubed plus v to the sixth plus v to the ninth plus v to the twelfth. It should be what I have here, v plus v squared plus v cubed plus v to the fourth. And then I have this unknown payment 15 months in the future, uh, which would be five three-month periods. So I multiply x by v to the fifth. And this is the equation you need to solve for x. So I will go ahead and use the store feature here. I'm going to calculate uh, these powers first and store them in memory and then add them all up. Multiply by 100, then add 50. 
write that down, also figure out what v to the fifth is, write that down, and solve the resulting algebra equation for x. So here I have v in there. That's good. Let's go ahead and put that in register 1. Store sto in register 1. Now let's square that thing and store that in register 2. Go back to register 1, v, and cube it. Store that in register 3. Recall the value in registers 1 again, v, and raise it to the fourth power. Store that in register 4. Now I can add those up. What's in register 4 plus, let's see here. Okay, let's do it with what's in register 1 there, plus what's in register 2, plus what's in register 3. I keep recalling those, plus what's in register 4. That's the sum, v plus v squared plus v to the third plus v to the fourth. Multiply that by 100, and then add 50. So what I have here, this equation becomes 480 equals 421.7098403 plus v to the fifth times x. What is v to the fifth? I'll go back to register 1, raise it to the fifth power, 0.862608784 times x. Solve this for x. So I need to subtract 421.709 from both sides. I get 480 minus 421.709.8403. Divide both sides by 0.8626. Divide by 0.862608784. Looks like x is 67. 57, and that is the correct answer for the first question. Uh, the method for the second question is pretty much the same, except V is going to be different. The one month interest rate is 1%. So this is part A here. Um, let's call it J instead of I. This is 1% one month rate. So um, the three-month rate is going to be uh, 1.01 to the third minus one. Um, it'll be a little bit higher than 3% because of compounding. Let's go ahead and figure out what oh, that is. So 1.01 .01 to the third power. There's your growth factor for this 1% one-month rate over the course of three months. So the corresponding interest rate is 0.03 zero three and that looks like it probably repeats I'll just assume it does and uh, well what the number that's already in there is uh, one plus I so I can take its reciprocal to find V V in this case one over one plus I is point nine seven oh five nine zero one four eight let's see if I can do everything now just with calculator and not um, write anything down with what I have left. It's good practice for exams anyway to be able to do that, though it's easy to make a mistake, so hopefully I won't. So I'm going to store the value of v here um, in register 1. I'm going to need to, just like before, I'm going to need to square it. Store that in register 2. I'm going to need to cube it. Store that in register 3. I'm going to need to raise it to the fourth power. Store that in register 4. I will need to raise it to the 5th power as well, as we saw before. Store that in register 5. Now I add up v plus v squared plus v cubed plus v to the 4th, so recall 1, plus recall 2, plus recall 3, plus recall 4. Multiply that by 100. Uh, add 50. I um, suppose I could negate this, but let's store this in register 0. I'm going to take 480 minus that. 
and then I need to divide by v to the fifth. Um, let's store this in register 9 for the moment. v to the fifth is in register 5. Divide by that means multiply by its reciprocal. Multiply what was in register 9. And the answer is 6798. And that is the correct answer. If that was too fast for you to keep up with what I did in your calculator or with just listening to me, um, I would recommend watching that last part again and writing down what I say and what I do if you need to to help you do that. But it is good to get skill at being able to do that just with a calculator and a minimal amount of writing, though it can lead to mistakes, so you got to be careful and you got to practice it. I should also mention in uh, finishing this problem that it should make, make sense that the answer to the second question is slightly bigger than the answer to the first question because a 3% three-month rate is Al earning less interest than a 1% one-month rate. A 1% one-month rate is really equivalent to about a 3.03% three-month rate, so you're going to need to pay a little bit more in that last month uh, for Part B.